Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll review the highly anticipated sequel Frostbank 2. In this game you develop, expand and advance your city in a society survival game set 30 years after an apocalyptic blizzard ravaged Earth. Now, video game reviews are just opinions. And you know what they say about opinions, right? They are like assholes and everyone has one. So <laughs> by the end of this, agree or disagree with my takes, you will close the video knowing if this is the game for you or not. As I am genuine and always try to look at things from different angles. Meaning if I expect the game to be in some way and it's not, I'll just mention it, but still give it a fair shot and a fair review, unlike IGN and others. I think you get it by now where I'm going with this, but let's dive into the frozen world of New London. Let's not rush to any conclusion so fast, shall we? From the get-go, Frostpunk 2, like its predecessor, gives me a vibe of discomfort. I hate cold. I always did. One of my recording nightmares since I was a child is to die frozen. I can barely touch frozen meat, you get the point. This game's presentation of the frozen post-apocalyptic land is as good as Frostpunk, even better. Now I could go on and compare the two games side by side, but I won't. I'll try to look at this as a separate product, as I should. Frostpunk 2 campaign consists in a prologue and 5 chapters. The prologue starts off by easing you into the mechanics, it presents you a few challenges along the way and some decisions you have to make in order to succeed. In the prologue I first found out about one thing that annoys me, and that's the camera smoothing. It moves slowly and it feels like it has weight and inertia. I like my cameras to be snappy and instant, not like this. It's not like, I don't know, this is some RTS that requires 300 FPS and APM though, so it's not a big problem after all, but it's still annoying. And talking about cameras, Frostpunk 2 takes a more zoomed out approach. You build and deal with districts that consist of multiple buildings in an entire area, not individual buildings. That means you can click and see little Timmy like in the original game, and you also can't see your workers make their way through that thick layer of snow and so on. You feel a bit disconnected from the people but even if the game tries its best to give you hints and clues of what's going on and how's everyone doing. In this one, you generally build districts, not individual buildings. You can expand and specialize the districts further by building certain buildings in them if you did the needed research. I like this approach as it gives your city a different scale, you know. What I don't really like is the performance that... <laughs> that comes attached to this. Until I enabled DLSS, I barely got 50 FPS with everything maxed out on a 4090. Yeah. And 64 gigs of RAM, an SSD, good processor, etc. This is the first game in a while that made my system sweat this much. With DLSS on, I got 90 to 100 FPS and frame generation, of course. And this is in a 1440p while recording, by the way. So I suspect a similar PC would gain a couple more FPS, yeah, without recording. Anyway, the performance is not stellar. I'd like some small notes in the options, in the video options that tell you how big of an impact something really is. A lot of games do this and it's a very overlooked feature by the developers. Because yeah, I know what should affect the performance more, but I don't think many of the players bother with such things. And Frostpunk 2 has no photo mode. Insert sad emoji here. And this is where I'll stop with the parallels between the two games. The story lasted for about 9 hours for me and I'll cut 1 hour for all the pausing I did while playing the game and taking notes and moving around the house. But the game has an endless mode after you finish the campaign and you can just play it there after you are done with the main story. It has some replayability. Each of the 5 chapters of the campaign I think offer you some choice in the beginning. Basically you set your goals as a mayor no matter what you pick, it's with ups and downs as you would expect. Some choices are easier than others for sure. The game's UI does a good job presenting you everything you need to know, from the date, people in your city, workforce, all resources, available hit, a timeline with the incoming temperature changes, all sorts of events, objectives, the council availability, your status with the different factions in the city, tensions between you and your citizens, research status and if you have new buildings unlocked. Everything is laid out in a very artsy way. And once you learn the UI, it's very easy 
easy to take decisions pretty fast. You have tutorials in every menu by the way, making the learning of the game a bit easier, if you are willing to read that is. The diplomacy in this game is very cool, once every 10 weeks or so you can propose a law so the representatives of the people can vote on. There are 4 categories with additional subcategories within them, but the main ones are survival, city, society and rule. When you decide what bill you want to propose, if you have that luxury, because most of the time you need to do what others want, but when you pick something, you have a few choices from the get-go. Each choice is supported by a faction, so like everything in this game, it's always a balancing act, whatever you do. Hear ye, hear ye, the proposed law has been approved. You need to be aware of whose toes you are stepping on. When you hit propose, you have the option to vote straight away or negotiate. Basically, when you negotiate, you fight for those people who are hesitant and can be persuaded. So they scratch your back now and <laughs> you scratch theirs into the future. Be careful with this, sometimes it's just not worth it. You can just hit vote and it will most likely pass. Hear ye, hear ye, the eyes have it. You can see at the glance your relation with each of the factions while playing the game, so you decide if you want to bribe them, make them a promise, give them an agenda and more. There's a lot of interactions with these guys. Stuart. Stuart. The research tree is very cool also. It has 6 main categories, heating, resource, frostland, city, society and hubs. You see the little exclamation mark on the stuff you need to research to improve your relations with a certain faction. And each research has 4 variations. Man, this is so cool. Sometimes they are pretty much the same, but sometimes your choice will be very different. Because in order to please a faction, you need to research something bad. The game lets you research it again later if you want the other options, so you can actually build the thing you want, with only the extra research cost and time of course. You are not bound by your region limits, by the way. Frostland allows you to explore new regions, scavenge for resources, bring more people in, and even colonize new areas. Like is the case with the entire game, sometimes you are presented with tough decisions. You can take the 1000 new people you found, but they are sick. And if you get them in, you might overwork your hospitals by making the rest of your citizens ill. You have the option to wait until you research a vaccine or just take the sick people in anyway. You can also send resources and people from your main city to the new found colony for a good kickstarter you know but you can obviously send resources the other way around if let's say you have a specialized colony that has a lot of oil Frostpunk 2 is a struggle from start to finish and everything contributes to that feeling from the gameplay graphics and even the sound Sound is a big part of the experience. You often hear that desperation and anger in people that are screaming, calling for your attention to their needs. The winter sounds are very well done, especially when there's a big storm event. Stuart, Stuart. We are calling you, Stuart. 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 When almost every activity in the city just stops. And you can imagine people sitting in their homes, hoping the city has enough supplies to get them through the storm and the insanely low temperatures. Report the rescue duty at once. As it is with the sounds, the graphics are just perfect. Everything helps selling you the cold and desolate world these people are living in, desperately looking for ways to survive. The effects are also very well done. I just wish when you focus a district to zoom on some distinctive parts, you know. Right now the feature seems pretty damn useless, because in every district it zooms in a similar building. The gameplay is good for the most part and you feel you got a lot of choices during the campaign missions. I can say that for sure because I only finished the campaign pain once, but at times I felt no matter what I did, the game forced a certain conclusion. I won't give you examples so I won't spoil anything, but yeah, I noticed this after I reloaded the save multiple times and a certain faction got more and more pissed at me for <laughs> no reason really, as I was taking certain actions that usually made relations better, not worse. Not this time. I, anyway, this is just a small gripe I have and to be frank I have no idea if it's a real issue or not.
Conclusion now, because I want to keep this short. Frostpunk 2, like its predecessor, is a honest game that doesn't sell you skins and battle passes. Thank God for that. It's a great experience if you're into those types of games. I, I get why some fans would feel disappointed by this game, but I'm not. For me, the fact that this one is different from the original just adds to the value. If done well, I'd rather see devs take what was good in the original and just expand upon. It is the perfect game for politicians, surgeons and people that are among the higher management in their company as this zoomed out approach makes you feel like a psycho sometimes. <laughs> people are just numbers, the end justifies the means and so on. I cried enough in the first game every time little Timmy died. Now I get to kill hundreds of little Timmys and not give a sh**. Seriously now, I like the game. Fix the performance without making the game look worse. Make a snappier camera because the smoothing on this one is driving me nuts and yeah great game guys i fully recommend it feel free to watch any of my other reviews i constantly change and evolve the format and length looking for the sweet spot you know feel free to subscribe like give me your two cents in the comments and all that thank you for watching until the end by the way mm -hmm.